Ministry welcome you to this week's Truth Provided Broadcast. The website is www.remnantofgod.org. Uh, so let's get right to it. Revelation 20, verse 4 says, And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, in which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. The prophecy clearly declares that some of the children of God that do not go along with the papacy's mark will find themselves at the business end of a guillotine. All too often, though, the argument arises, how can we, as a modern and more civilized people, use guillotines? I mean, you know, would this not be barbaric as well as insane in today's age? After all, we're civilized, and execution methods of the Dark Ages are just plain outdated. Therefore, this must prove the prophecy of Revelation chapter 20 to be completely false, right? Well, you may want to suggest to those that speak such words that they should hold on to their hat. A couple of years ago, I made a statement that information had crossed my desk regarding the reality that thousands of guillotines were being stored on American soil. Not too long ago, I received word that the information received regarding the guillotines was not only accurate, it was actually being lobbied in Washington, D.C. to get them legalized for governmental use. Georgia and Montana as the recipients of these guillotines. Uh, 15 or 30,000 guillotines have been shipped to Georgia as well as Montana for safekeeping until such a time as they're needed. If it's true, what are they up to? Some of us may recall the video of a man being electrocuted in a Georgia prison facility. We know that if you do not place water on the sponge upon the man's head, his death will not only be prolonged and extremely violent, his head will actually ignite during the process. Fact is, many are aware State executions are never videotaped as well. However, some tape appears of a man being electrocuted in Georgia, and it somehow surfaces in the general public. They did not place water as a necessary conductor in that sponge, because the video did in fact show the man's head igniting after he bounced around for quite some time in that chair. You know, to think someone would actually put someone through such a torture act so as to just get the law lobbied? Why do you suppose a video would surface of an execution when videos are never made at executions, from what I understand, and most certainly never released to the public if they were made? And why do you suppose they somehow forgot to place water on that sponge? Well, the answer is plain. The video was released so the American public can see it and complain about the inhumane methods used, thereby giving the government officials a springboard to start lobbying process for guillotines. The governing officials in Georgia were shouting it was inhumane to kill people like this. You know, the prophecy declares that some will be killed by guillotine, and that is what must occur. Not long ago, after that video surfaced, many state officials, including the governor of that state, started a massive campaign to stop executions by electrocution. But was there a decided choice for execution, you ask? A no-brainer, huh? <laughs> the guillotine. Now, some of you may be asking why we would have government officials lobbying for laws that would require guillotines as a way to kill those they deem worthy of death. And so the common sense question would be, of a non-believer, why? With our technology, with all our civilized ways, with all our humane laws, what would drive men to kill with such a thing as a guillotine? Money, money, money. That's right, folks. The almighty dollar bill is what they worship. They truly serve the God of mammon. You know, we're living in an age when we see commercials on TV telling everyone in the USA to sign the backs of their driver's licenses so they can harvest our organs for profit. You know, the doctors jump at the first opportunity to harvest your dead loved ones before they even have a chance to get cold on the table. Think of it. You can now get over $40,000 for one kidney. Imagine what an entire human body is worth. Why would guillotines represent the better option? Why don't they choose lethal injection as an alternative? I mean, it seems peaceful. Let's get back to common sense. Because the organs would be poisoned and not worthy of harvesting. Bottom line, you can't make money. What I'm about to share with you is an excerpt from bill number 1274 in the Georgia House of Representatives. You can view the entire bill on the Georgia House of Representatives website. Notice how the bill lets the cat out of the bag as to why they wanted the guild teams in the first place. And it's not as they said when they brought it to the public's attention. This is Georgia House of Representatives, or 9596 sessions, uh, the House Bill 1274, death penalty guillotine uh, provisions, code section 17 10 38 17 1044, section 1. I'm just going to read you these two small paragraphs. You know, it's from line 11 to 16, and then it jumps to 18 to 115. Nothing to it. It says, Law. To amend Article 2 of Chapter 10 of Title 17 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to the death penalty generally so as to provide a statement of legislative policy to provide for death by guillotine, to provide for applic uh, applicability to repeal conflicting laws and for other purposes. Now listen to this paragraph. The General Assembly finds 
that while prisoners condemned to death may wish to donate one or more of their organs for transplant, any such desire is thwarted by the fact that electrocution makes all such organs unsuitable for transplant. The intent of the General Assembly in enacting this legislation is to provide for a method of execution which is compatible with the donation of organs by a condemned prisoner. The video that was released of the man in the electric chair declared quite boldly, this is inhumane. Did it not, for those of us that saw it? Yet we see here in the wording of the Georgia House Bill number 1274, their main concern is not whether or not it's inhumane. The bill states plainly, electrocution makes all such organs unsuitable for transplant. Think about how advantageous this beheading affords them. Our technology is such that these headless bodies can be kept alive indefinitely with the machinery that we have in our hospitals today so as to assure the organs stay fresh. Let's imagine, let me ask you, if you're in jail, for whatever reason, the government has put you there, and they decide you have to die. What choice of execution are you going to take? Seriously, what person in their right mind is going to say, fry me, I want to bounce around for a few moments in rising pain? The prophecy declares that children of God will be jailed and executed by guillotine. And we see that soon that will be the case in Georgia. And quite honestly, I do believe they will not give the prisoners a choice on this anyway. When the money starts funneling in, death by guillotine will become mandatory. I mean, common sense again. Did you ever, did, I mean, did they ever give people a choice not to be electrocuted in the past? So why would they let them decide in the future? You know, for whatever reason they think of, many of us will be indeed blessed with the wonderful opportunity to die a martyr's death for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll have that blue uh, ribbon around the base of our robe in heaven for eternity. And don't think it'll stop in Georgia. 30,000 guillotines is a bit much for one state. They always start somewhere and move on from there. So does anyone know how many large cities there are in the USA? Are there 30,000 of them? I, I, I truly don't know, but if you divide 30,000 guillotines by 50 states, you come up with 600 guillotines per state. And I know there's not that many big cities. I mean, you got Chicago, you got New York, you got LA, you got Miami, you, you got some big cities, but then you got some of the smaller cities like, say, Champaign, Illinois, or even Oakland, Illinois, and stuff like that, you know? But I can, you know, I mean, will they be used as a scare tactic? Well, yeah, sure. They're going to use it as a scare tactic. You better believe it. And by the way, how do you suppose Christians will end up behind bars? Sure, most of us will have fabricated crimes designed around us. There are certain crimes that they're going to put against us that we may be convicted of that uh, we don't even know how, you know, where they're coming from. And what are some of these certain crimes? Headline, national issue. One court for all the world. Now, this is an old article, of course, but it bears hearing it. A United Nations meeting is in Rome is wrapping up five weeks of work on a proposed international criminal court. The new court would have worldwide jurisdiction and could investigate, indict, hold, try, and punish those who committed certain crimes. The proposed international criminal court would subject Americans to a new world authority. Why are they so vague about the certain crimes? And what do you suppose a certain crime would be for Rome? From Joshua Strong's book, Our Country, chapter 5, paragraphs 2 to 4, it says, The Archbishop of St. Louis said this, Heresy and unbelief are crimes. But anyway, the article says, Here is heresy and unbelief are crimes, and in Christian countries, as in Italy and Spain, for instance, where all people are Catholics, and where the Catholic religion is an essential part of the law of the land, they are punished as crimes. Every cardinal, archbishop, and bishop in the Catholic Church takes an oath of allegiance to the Pope, in which occur the following words, Heretics, schismatics, and rebels to our said Lord the Pope, or his aforesaid successors, I will to my utmost persecute and oppose. The Vatican has the one world court. The Vatican has the one world church. And then the people of God will be arrested for certain crimes. And the United States of America will do exactly as prophecy said it would. It will help Rome kill the Christians and enforce the mark of the beast. And of course, many of us will choose death. Many of us will choose death. Many of us will choose death over denying the truth we know in Christ. Praise God.